Hi guys, this is Ms. Romani, and this week we're going to be learning about the endocrine system. Now, the endocrine system is a system that is responsible for the, both the production and secretion of the hormones in our body, and there are a lot of hormones actually being produced and secreted by a variety of different glands. So, let's learn about the different glands and hormones in general before we get into some specifics. So hormones are secreted by glands within our body called endocrine glands. And endocrine glands, as you can see on the diagram on the right, are found throughout our body. And they produce hormones that enter our bloodstream. And once they enter our bloodstream, the hormones are going to be moved through our blood to every single tissue and every single cell in our body. So one of the important things that our body needs to do in terms of regulating not the production of hormones so much as the action of hormones is to make sure that only cells that need access to the effects of that particular hormone are affected by a hormone. And in order to do that, different cells in different body tissues have receptors for very specific hormones. These cells are called target cells. And these are the cells that allow the hormones to act within the tissues themselves. Let me give you an example. So we have a gland called the pituitary gland that is found in our brain. And the pituitary gland produces a lot of different hormones, one of them being a hormone called growth hormone. A growth hormone, as the name implies, uh, stimulates growth. And it's produced throughout our childhood, and every single time we have a growth spurt in vast quantities. And then after puberty, growth hormone production really dwindles, which is the reason why we stop growing at some point. Now, obviously, most tissues in our body need to have receptors to growth hormone because we need to grow bigger. But some tissues need to have extra receptors to growth hormone because those are the tissues that are going to be most affected by the hormone in order to make us grow taller as we develop. So for example, the ends of our bones and our muscles will have more receptors to growth hormone to say, for example, our eyeballs, which essentially don't grow very big from the time that you were born, which is the reason why babies have such big eyes. So there are certain parts of our body that have more or less receptors to growth hormone, and as a result, will be affected by that hormone in more, uh, more severely than others or to a greater extent. Another example will be a hormone that we discussed in the previous lesson, oxytocin. And oxytocin, I mentioned before, essentially produces contractions in the uterus. So the uterus will have many receptors to oxytocin. The uterus will be a target tissue for oxytocin, and the cells of the uterus will have receptors for oxytocin so that when oxytocin attaches to the uterus, it promotes the muscle contractions that results in birth. That's just a very quick way of sort of taking a look at how target cells and hormones can play a role in both our development and our metabolism and homeostasis. Now, there are two main types of hormones, and one of them are called steroid hormones. Steroid hormones are made out of fats, lipids, and the difference between steroid hormones and the other type of hormones, which are protein hormones, is where they can affect the cell based on their solubility within the cell. So because steroid hormones are made out of fats, made out of basically cholesterol, they can actually move through the plasma membrane and enter the cell. And then once inside the cell, they can move through the nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope and enter the nucleus itself. There's not that many steroid hormones. The main examples of steroid hormones that we have in our bodies are the sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and one of the stress hormones called cortisol. But anyways, any of those hormones can act by entering the cell and finding its target receptor within the cytoplasm itself. So all cells in your body will be affected to some degree by steroid hormones because they will enter the cell membrane and enter the cytoplasm, but only target cells will have a receptor to which the steroid hormone can bind. And once the steroid hormone binds to the receptor, then it can enter the nucleus, and then at the nucleus, it can actually induce transcription of a particular gene sometimes, or in some capacity control protein synthesis by controlling not just transcription, but maybe the post-transcriptional modifications that happens to mRNA or the movement of mRNA out into the cytoplasm. But this essentially, the way that, that a hormone would work is that it attaches to a receptor in the cytoplasm, enters the nucleus, and in some way, once in there, it can actually control protein synthesis. 
The other type of hormone is called a protein hormone, and protein hormones do not have the ability to enter the cell because they're water-soluble and they're not lipid-soluble. They cannot pass through the plasma membrane. So the receptors for protein hormones are found on the plasma membrane, and then they trigger a series of what are called secondary messengers, which then in turn direct protein synthesis through a cascade of chemical reactions. So is not a direct effect. It's more a series of effects, a cascade of reactions that eventually will lead to the synthesis of a very specific protein within the cytoplasm. And so that's it for today's lesson. Next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at more specific glands in our bodies and how the hormones they produce can help us maintain homeostasis. Talk to you soon.